All right, welcome to Table Tennis Philosophy. Today, today we're gonna combine a couple things, and uh, one of them is a review of the Sweden defense blade. Um, uh, I've got one right here, and it has thin, thin sponge, uh, kind of all around smooth rubber on both sides. And there's um, a few things. Let's just first talk about the blade. Surprisingly, has a very short handle, which makes the oversized head seem even more oversized, but isn't, um, doesn't feel quite as um, lopsided or, you know, out of balance as you might expect, um, probably because I do have thin sponge on both sides. And if you were, for instance, to put long pips on one side, which would be typical with a defensive blade and either no sponge or very little sponge, uh, that would even make it lighter and probably make it work just fine. So one of the things I discovered when I uh, tried to use this to play a few matches was um, it, it lives up to its name as far as a defensive paddle. It's great for pushes, it's great for chopping, it's okay for blocking, it's slow, it's controlled. Couldn't really produce any offense with it, which I probably should have realized. But um, that's one of the things you can kind of figure out uh, sometimes if you've never used a defensive racket, if you've always used offense, um, trying to find out what it is that makes your particular uh, racket do what it does. Sometimes it's best to, or I don't know if it's best, but it's a it's a good idea to look at what the other extreme is. And uh, this would be a really slow defensive uh, blade, and particularly with this uh, 1.0 rubber on each side. What happens is it's it's is fine for defense. Uh, if one of the things, that one of the reasons that defensive blades are made to be slow is well, as you make those chops, you don't want the ball just bouncing off real quickly. You want it to stay on there. You want to create a lot of spin, have it sink into the sponge, stay on there. So that, um, I mean, the essence of defense is that you've got to be able to keep the ball on the table better than your opponent. And so if you're playing defense, whether it's a chopping game, close to the table, long pips blocking game, whatever. If you're gonna be successful at it, you have to be steadier than most of your opponents. Um, if you play offense, it's a given that you're gonna take some chances, you're gonna miss some shots, you're gonna be aggressive, which means that um, you're not going to be as steady at least in theory, is a defensive player. So what you're wanting to do is to um, end the point quickly, uh, or at least relatively quickly, whereas a defensive player um, wants to outlast you. And there's a lot of different approaches to doing that. And if your approach was to try to push everything, uh, this Sweden defense might be a good choice, uh, matched up with the right rubber, could work. I don't recommend it at all if you're trying to make very much in the way of offensive shots. It's, it's really made for defense. Now, you probably find that most defensive blades are less expensive, um, probably because you're not going to see too many that uh, have carbon fiber in the, in as far as a layer inside the wood. And um, they, they do make those, but it seems uh, counterproductive if you're trying to make a really good defensive blade. Um, carbon tends to speed the ball up. So I'm, uh, if you have a different experience and you've got a good defensive car carbon blade, uh, let me know, but to me, uh, I lean towards all wood blades, or I have always in the past, uh, although right now I'm using the Falk Carbon, which the good thing about that is it feels a bit like an all wood blade, but it, um, but it plays with a little more pace. But 
point being, <laughs> you can learn a lot from using a defensive racket, figuring out, oh, okay, you put a slower, slower blade, slower rubber, it's not going to do offense, and you, but it can work really, really well for pushes, chops, a controlled game, which is not a great way to play against better players. Uh, generally, it's it's possible, but you got to figure out: um, is this something that could work for you? And there's fewer and fewer defensive players out there. And um, I'm, I think I did a video recently on is is table tennis defense dead and um, the point being that it was dying a slow death and um, so there may not be a whole lot of Sweden defense paddles sold but uh, I've got one and uh, I, I find use for it in coaching from time to time and it's it's good for what it what it does I've gone through a lot of uh, defensive blades and I think you don't want to get ridiculously slow, and you certainly don't want one that's too fast if you're truly using it to play defense. Sweden defense seems to fall right, really right in the middle of that. It's pretty slow, but um, not in the range of what I would call ridiculous slow, where you're trying to make everything as slow as you possibly can. It, it, would, it would work for defense. It's made by Yasaka, and... Um, it's got a nice feel to it, but it truly lives up to its name. So, like I said, you can learn a lot from uh, about equipment by using some different stuff and using a defensive racket and getting the feel for um, what what that is. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to use something slower and try to if you normally in, you're an attacking player try to try to win some matches. Um, without quite as much offense. See what you can do with just good placement and uh, shot selection. Um, may not be the way to go for your overall game, and you certainly want to get back to your offensive game, but uh, it, you can learn a little bit from it. All right. Uh, just want to point out that the, uh, the channel is steadily growing. I'm getting um, a lot of good feedback, and uh, we're more people subscribing, so uh, appreciate that. If you get the chance, push the like button. I'm not going to push that. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to not going to beg, but it, it does help. So uh, anyway, thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Appreciate it. Bye.